it's alive. Okay, so the beginning of the van build has begun. I have the solar panels installed on the roof. Um, I mean, specifically, I had them installed, uh, which I probably should explain. So, you can totally install solar panels yourself. They're not that difficult. Uh, they come with all the hardware you need. And for most people, if they have, if they're converting a cargo van or something, it's very, very easy. You just drill right into the roof. I didn't really want to do that uh, for a couple of reasons. One. As we've discussed before, this is a passenger van, not a cargo van. So there's a headliner, which you can't see because it's out of frame. Um, and then a lot of like plasticky bits and stuff. So that it kind of changes how the build is gonna get kind of finalized. And that's all fine. I, I knew that going in, but that meant for the solar panels, I kind of wanted to do something a little, or I needed to do something a little bit different because of where I live. I kind of imagine that no matter how I sealed them or waterproofed the, the holes, that it, the van was gonna bake through one summer and then leak the next winter and then that'd be it. And then again, because of the headliner, that's just gonna be terrible. So what I wanted was something very specific and it was a little beyond my skill set. So I brought it over to my mechanic and he was able to fabricate some brackets that would connect to the brackets that came with the solar panel and kind of connect them all to the roof rails uh, in a secure fashion that is also kind of low to the, the van. Because I didn't, the other way to have done this is just by buying roof racks and then mounting the panels to the roof racks. But at that point, you're a couple inches off the roof because of the rails, then you're a couple inches above that because of the brackets. And then you're a couple inches above that because of the bar that the brackets are connected to. And then on top of that is the solar panel. So basically the top of the solar panel would be like 10 inches off the roof at that point. And that was just, that was kind of obvious, it would look super weird and seem really unsafe that it would be that far out of the slipstream that it would just be, I don't know, dangerous. Because these things are basically sails at that point and I don't want them kind of tearing off uh, I'll, you know, while I'm driving on the highway somewhere. So I wanted it low to the van roof and inconspicuous as possible. And I think that was totally achieved. They are as kind of as close as you can get to the roof as possible. And from just standing next to the van, unless you're super tall, uh, you can't really see what they are. It kind of looks like, a, like maybe I have a ladder up there or a cargo rack or something. It looks any, unless you know their solar panels, you're not going to guess that's what it is. Perfect. The other thing that I had them do is the cables off the solar panels are coming down the back behind the tail light and then in through where the tail lights are connected. Uh, so the wires for the tail lights are connected and I have solar power. Um, uh, it's obviously theoretical solar power at this point because it's not connected to anything. So that's my goal for today. Uh, I'm just gonna kinda connect everything up so that it's working. Next week I have what's probably gonna be the inaugural trip for the van, um, sort of. Because it's not gonna be ready, but it'll be sort of working. Like the core pieces of it should be working at that point. So today my goal is to connect the charge controller and the batteries and if that all works, I finally got the fridge that I ordered seven weeks ago, which will go here. And so if I can get all of those pieces working, that's kind of the core uh, power heart of the, of the van. And I can build from that uh, with when I have more time. So that's my goal for today. Charge controller, yeah, solar panels, charge to charge controller, charge controller to the batteries, and then the load to the charge controller. And I'll talk about that as I go. Tomorrow, which will be the next video, I'm gonna try to build out a rough idea for the frame of the bed. And that's kind of the number one question I've been getting from the van because they see the size of the van, they know all the stuff I wanna put into it, and they're like, well, where are you gonna sleep? And I have a plan for that. It was always part of the design that sneak preview, I'm going to build a little platform that'll go 
over here that will collapse down and store here above the batteries and the charge control and everything. And that means during the day, I can use the seat that's here to work. Uh, I'll have access to the fridge and all of that. And then at night, this will all fold down lo lower than this. It actually goes basically flat. All that will fold down, move the bed over, fold it open, then I have a bed. That's the plan. I've got the wood for it. We'll see if my carpentry skills are up to the task. Um, but today, it's electrical. And from all the videos and everything I've read, this should be fairly easy, but I don't know. Let's find out. So as I said, this is the charge controller, uh, 20 amp MPPT charge controller uh, from Renergy. Now, this is not going to be the final version of this, uh, as I said. Um, I'm just going to try to connect everything with the wires that I have and the pieces that I have so that um, I can just kind of make sure that it all works. Okay, so as you can see, uh, there's a few new things in here. These are my 100 amp hour batteries, lithium ion phosphates, and these will be connected in parallel, so they are 200 amp hours total and still 12 volts. Those connect to the charge controller and then the charge controller to the solar panels. Um, I said it a little bit differently a minute ago, but um, there's actually a very specific way you're supposed to hook them up and it's actually the batteries first and then the solar. So uh, let's do that. Now I should note the batteries are off at this point. Uh, there's a whole process to turn them on, which I'll do in a minute, but yeah, they are in shelf mode. Now normally you'd want to use red wire and black wire to show positive and negative. Um, when I bought these, they were out of the red for this size, but uh, I don't think it's really gonna matter because the wire coming off here is gonna be red. Okay, so next we've got a fuse to go in between the uh, battery pack and the charge controller. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna try to fuse everything so it doesn't blow up if I uh, do something wrong. Okay, so. I think we're ready for the next step. So now the battery is connected to itself or to each other. The positive from here goes to the fuse, and that fuse goes to this cable, which I will label later. And then the negative goes to this cable. So at this point we have workings of a circuit. Now we got a stuco. Battery negative, moment of truth. Okay, so now that it's all wired, I'm going to disconnect battery one. Um, I guess this would be battery two, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm going to disconnect it and then turn on one, turn on the other, reconnect them, and we should be good to go. Moment of truth. Hey. Next step, we're actually gonna plug in this guy. So this is a Bluetooth transmitter. It lets us do everything, all the setup through the app. So let's do that. So, as you can see, we've got battery one connected to battery two, connected to charge controller, and charge controller is connected to the app, and 
a fuse and the charge controller is showing good charge on the battery 12 volt system lithium ion and that is all connected to the Renergy app which you can definitely not at all see um, and that is showing um, well that's not charging because it's not because it's not connected to anything that's next let's uh, let's connect to the solar panels Uh, I should mention before I do this, um, there is a fuse already in line with the positive cable on this up at the solar panels on the roof. Um, so that's why there's no fuse here. Again, kind of want to fuse every piece of the chain so that if something goes, it doesn't take out everything. Oh, uh, this little doohickey which is just a button and what looks like, I guess, RS-230 or uh, RJ-45. Uh, that just turns it on, turns the batteries uh, out of storage mode. All right, that should do for now. Let's see how we do. Aha! It's working. So it says I'm getting 18.4 solar volts, uh, 2.82 solar amps, and so that's a total of 55 watts. Hey! And oh, and I don't know if you can see it. This is super fun. Uh, there we go. The it's look, it's ooh, and then that's going for that's there and that's there and yeah. Well, and we're done. Thanks for watching. No, just kidding. Um, I am I am really super pleased right now. Um, yeah, so it's just kind of working. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is to test this out. So it is working. So we've got power and we've got solar power coming in. The app tells me so. Uh, and this, so does the charge controller. Uh, hold on, I'll show you on the app. So the app, which I'll show a little graphic of, um, solar, panel come, solar power coming into the charge controller, charge controller sending out to the battery. So that is uh, the first step. Uh, it's getting about 50 watts, which is obviously pretty low, but it is late in the afternoon and the panels are, they're not in shade exactly, but the sun's hitting at a pretty weak angle. So uh, I wasn't expecting much more than that right now. So I'm gonna connect the load, which in this case is just a wire. Oh, oh here. Which is at the moment, just a wire connected to a 12 volt adapter. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Um, so, theoretically, this should have power. And if it doesn't, you'll never see this part of the video. It's got power. All right, let's see how it does. Help if I had it in the right direction. There we go. I have 13.4 on the voltmeter. I have 13.4 on the charge controller, and I have 13.4 on the app. I would call that a rousing success. Now to put the fridge in and see if that works. So as you can see in the background, I have put my fridge in where it's going to go. Um, I have a whole plan to like secure it better, but again, this is just the the dry run, if you will. Um, oh, I don't need this on anymore. So, just to uh, sum up, we've got two batteries, 
hook to a fuse, hook to the charge controller. The charge controller is also hooked up to the solar panels. And through this little makeshift 12 volt uh, outlet and 12 volt receptacle. Both of these are also fused. You only need one fuse per chain, but it's built in here and anyway, it's fine for now. Again, this is all just trial run. With any luck, this should boot up the fridge. Just kidding. All right, let's see how we do. Right, this is my Dometic CFX 25. It's um, small, but it's, of course it's a small van. And it's expensive because, I don't know, they all kind of are just expensive for some reason. It's also only the second fridge I've ever bought in my life. But that's a whole other story. Anyway, let's see how we do. Hey! I can't tell you how excited I am. No, I can. I can literally tell you. I am so excited right now that this actually all worked because uh, I haven't done electrical stuff like this before. And, you know, I've just got this little... And I've just got this kind of hodgepodge in here. Ooh, can you hear it? It's a little... It's starting up. Anyway, let's see the inside. And look, the light's on and everything. And it's... It's going, and it says it's getting 13.3 volts, um, which is actually slightly less than what it should be getting, but I'm guessing that's due to the losses from the cables, because there's, it's got about, oh, maybe six or eight feet worth of cable right now. But anyway, it's close enough, that's fine. And uh, yeah, I can set the temp. It's got Bluetooth and everything, which is crazy to me. Um, and yeah, it's gonna cool down to that. So let's see, um, let's see how that does, and let's see what the app looks like. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we've got 20 volts coming in, 1.12 amps coming in, which is 22 watts of power. And again, like I said, that's 10% of what these can actually do. Um, but that's because it's again late in the day and this, they're getting kind of a, the sun at a rather oblique angle. So I wasn't expecting much more than that. That's fine. Um, and then the total energy produced so far since I've plugged it in is 0 0.013 kilowatt hours. That's fine. Um, batteries, charging volts, charging amps, and so forth. And then down the bottom here, we have the, th the load info, which is going out to the fridge, and it's drawing three amps or 40 watts. Now, as you can do the math on that, <laughs> um, that's drawing far more power than it is generating, because we're generating uh, 22 watts and we're pulling 43 watts. Now, that's fine for now, because one, I guess, like I said, it's later in the day. Two, it just turned on and now it's it's running full to cool the the cool the cool the cooler to uh, the correct temperature. So this is going to go down. I'm not I'm not worried about that. Um, it's not going to be running like this all the time. So that's the, again, this is fine. Um, but also, I have so many um, I have so many amp hours to deal with. I'm not even that worried about this um, if it was running like this for a while because again, I just have tons of capacity. So anyway, uh, this is a huge success. I am very happy and yeah, we're gonna call it for there. I'm gonna clean everything up. I don't think you need to see that. Um, hold on, you can actually look at me though. So yeah, so anyway, uh, I'm gonna call it, call this video now uh, and I'm gonna clean this up a little bit just so it's not all just, as the Brits say, higgledy-piggledy. Uh, is that right? I don't know, I just like the word. So anyway, I'm gonna clean this up so it's a little more respectable for now. And then tomorrow, as I said, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna start building out the bed. I'm also probably gonna try to mount these or at least strap them in, same with that. I have some extra pieces of wood for that. Um, the plan is for there to, to put it actually where the seat, mount it to where the seat was. I just don't want them rattling around back here in case I need to slam on the brakes or something. But for now, this was, uh, took far less time than I expected, actually. And the fact that it's all working makes me super happy. So, yeah, what a win. 
Anyway, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.